In July 2019, one of the biggest banks in the world, Capital One, lost over 100 million customer records. And it wasn't some genius hacker. It was one IAM misconfiguration, one setting that cost them over $100 million. Since then, pretty much every major company has moved to the cloud. But what's scary to me is that 82% of cloud breaches are still caused by misconfiguration. So yeah, the cloud is everywhere, but most teams still don't even know how to use it. That's why there is a huge, huge opportunity in cloud security right now. And I'm not just talking about the buzzword of cybersecurity in general, I'm talking about more cloud specific skills. Because now with the rise of AI and vibe coding where AI can generate infrastructure or generate code, security is gonna become more important than ever. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a four step cloud security roadmap that is actually realistic for 2025 and beyond. We're gonna cover the foundation, the build, positioning and your first role. And I'm gonna cover one thing that most people skip and it's the main thing holding them back. All right, so firstly, what do cloud engineers actually do? The simple answer is they basically make sure that the cloud doesn't become the next security breach headline. That means locking down who can access what, protecting data while it's moving or while it's sitting and making sure that everything in the cloud from servers to containers to databases is secure by design. But the thing that schools and courses get wrong that really, really annoys me is that you get told that you need to learn all the theory before you can get started. This is just not true at all. And that leads us into step one, which is the foundations. As I said, you don't need to learn everything before you start, but you do need to start and learn the right things along the way. The biggest myth is that you need to master security, networking, Linux, before you even log into an AWS console. You don't. In fact, the best learners are the ones that are learning it all together both the theory and the practical implementation all in one. That's literally what every successful cloud switcher in our community has done. Instead, you build your foundation while you're on a cloud platform. You can pick AWS, GCP, or Azure. AWS is the biggest and has the most comprehensive free tier. Plus, I'll show you a bunch of projects that you can do for free later as well. So I'd recommend starting with AWS if you don't know where to start. And the foundations you're gonna learn for this role fall into three main pillars, networking, operating systems, and security. First up is networking. Networking is one of the most overlooked pieces in cloud, but it's often where most of the issues actually happen. Here's what you actually need to know. First up is IP addresses, and every cloud resource gets one. Public means anyone can reach it, private means it's internal only, and if you don't know the difference between the two, you're either gonna expose your entire network or nothing's gonna work at all. Next is subnets and CIDR blocks. This is how you split up your network into smaller chunks. Think of it like putting your resource in a room so you can decide who gets access to what. Next up, we have ports and protocols. Web apps use port 443, that's like HTTPS. SSH uses port 22. Everything else you probably wanna block it because open ports are a major attack surface. Then we have security groups and NACLs. These are your cloud firewalls. You use them to write rules like only allow traffic from this IP address or block all traffic from port 3306. Next up, you got DNS. This actually comes up more than you'd expect. Anytime you connect a domain to S3 or CloudFront or an EC2 instance, DNS is involved. If something breaks, it's often the first thing you want to check. The next foundation you need to learn is Linux. If you're touching cloud infrastructure, you're probably touching Linux. It powers almost everything behind the scenes and you don't need to be a Linux expert, but you do need to learn some of the following. Things like logging into an EC2 instance with SSH or installing packages through the command line, setting file permissions so you're not exposing sensitive keys. Why do you need to learn stuff like this? Because 96% of the top online servers run on Linux. And most cloud services, especially on AWS, run on Linux by default. So yeah, you need to learn enough to be dangerous, but also, I guess, to be safe. <laughs> the next pillar you need to learn is core security concepts. This is the lens that you apply to everything. As AWS says right when you start learning, security is level zero. Here's some of the core ideas that you're gonna learn about when you're setting up IAM roles or configuring S3 buckets or designing network architecture. These are the things you need to learn. The first thing you're gonna learn about is least privilege. This is about always giving the minimum access required and never anything more. Then you're gonna learn the difference between auth n versus auth z. Authentication is who are you? Authorization is what can you do? Mixing these up can cause massive problems. Next up is encryption. You'll be using encryption at rest and things like S3 or in transit and things like HTTPS constantly. AWS KMS is probably going to be your go-to service for key management. And lastly, the CIA triad. This is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Everything you do in security ties back to this. And don't just take my word for it, this happens in real life. Like in 2018, Tesla accidentally exposed its entire Kubernetes dashboard to the internet 
with no authentication. Hackers then found it, accessed it, and discovered AWS credentials found in one of the pods. They then used those keys to spin up crypto miners inside a Tesla's account, racking up massive cloud computing costs. And it didn't take any malware, it wasn't genius. They were just missing authn, exposed their secrets, and they didn't have IAM guardrails. This is why core principles like authentication, least privilege, secrets management are incredibly important. One mistake, as we've seen, can open up the door for a massive breach. Look, I wanna say something really important before we go into the next part. And that is, if you're watching this video right now and you haven't hit that like button, please do. That would really help us out. Leave a comment, all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> onto the next part. And the next part is step number two in our roadmap, which is build mode. In step one, you learned what to learn. In step two, I'm gonna teach you how to learn it. And that is through building. The truth is you don't need more courses. You just need to do more reps. The only way to get good at cloud security is to build things that are insecure and then fix them. For example, if you're setting up a private subnet, boom, you're learning how IP addresses work, how CIDR blocks divide up networks, and why ports need to be locked down unless there's a specific reason to open them. Or maybe you're configuring IAM roles. Suddenly you're deep in least privileged territory because identity is the number one attack surface in the cloud. Like more than 80% of cloud breaches come down to just one person having too much access. Or maybe you're launching an EC2 on Linux. Now you're learning how to SSH in, restrict traffic to only your IP, update packages, close unused ports, and use file permissions so you're not accidentally leaking secrets to the internet. These aren't necessarily advanced topics. They're just the fundamentals embedded into everything that you do. And the best way to learn this all is through projects. For example, if you wanna learn anything networking related, I'd recommend doing our networking projects on our website. You can literally get started for free. Every project is beginner friendly and has a step-by-step -step guide. Plus you can choose your difficulty and we'll walk you through everything that you do. There's also a lot of security projects on there. Some of them are part of our pro plan, but you can get started for free on most of the projects. Check out the link in the description. And if you can't find the project that you're looking for, you can also use resources like ChatGPT. You can use the prompt that I'm gonna put on screen now and just change it to what you wanna learn. And even though that we know that ChatGPT messes things up and it hallucinates and it doesn't always get things right, it can be a good starting point if you don't know where to start, but I would recommend doing our projects there way better. Something I quickly wanna to touch on is certifications. I know that it's often the number one thing that most other people say to do. In my opinion, I would not start there. Certifications can be useful, but in my opinion, why wouldn't you just build? Why wouldn't you actually show recruiters what you can do rather than just showing them that you got a certificate? I'm not gonna talk about certifications too much because I personally don't think it's the best way to learn and I also think that in the future, skills will be authenticated through what you've actually done and what you can show rather than a certificate which just shows that you memorize the theory. Anyway, this kind of brings me on to step three in our roadmap, which is positioning. This is all about how you can make the project yours so you actually get hired. Because at this point, maybe you've done a few cloud projects, which is awesome, but we're also living in a world where AI is doing a lot of that. So how do you actually stand out? How do you make the project yours? Maybe you change the use case, add a feature, you break something and then you figure out why it broke. Ask, how can I actually make this secure in production? That's how you go from project doer to a real problem solver. Something that recruiters are looking for. You might even do some of our projects, put the project guide into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT how you can improve it, how you can make it better, how you can build on top of this. I really just want you to challenge yourself and have fun. It's actually so much fun to build and learn while you're getting your hands dirty. That's exactly how I've learned cloud. But you need to do this one thing that everyone leaves out for some reason. Document your projects. You could do the coolest stuff in the world. You could build the most amazing project ever, but if you have nothing to show for it, what's the point? On our platform, as you go through the project, you fill in questions, you add in screenshots, we automatically document for you because we know it takes time. But even if you do that, if you're doing your own project, maybe you wanna document on Word or Google Docs or Canva, but document what you're doing and recruiters will be able to see the actual hard work that you're putting in. This takes some extra time and that's why we've automated it, but it is so worth it. And bonus move that I don't see a lot of people do is if you read a job description and they're looking for IEM or Terraform or encryption, 
why not do projects based on the things that they're looking for? If you can get to a place where you've actually done everything on the job description, you're gonna feel so much more confident because confidence is built on credibility and the credibility that you're building is through projects. This brings me on to step four of our roadmap, which is your first role. The thing is you don't need a cloud security job to start working in cloud security. A lot of these roadmaps set you up with unrealistic expectations, thinking you're gonna land a cloud security job in the first six months that you start doing this, or maybe as your first role in tech. Realistically, you could get the skills, you could do the projects, but then you go into a job interview and you keep hearing, we're well, sorry, we're looking for someone with a little bit more experience. So don't wait for the title, get the experience before the role. Ideally, the projects and the documentation is what leads you to get this role, but it could be super competitive in your area and you may not actually get this role without having more experience first. So if you can't land a cloud security job right away, don't stress. Let's just start looking for some roles that are adjacent. So like cloud support with a security focus, DevOps roles that include IAM or infrastructure, junior security analysts at cloud native companies, even general IT roles or sysadmin roles on companies that are running AWS can be a great place to start. Because the real game is what you do inside that job. How do you put your hand up for different tasks so you can actually make your way up the ladder? I was literally talking to one of our students the other day. He's a cybersecurity master's student. He's done a bunch of projects and he couldn't find a job. So he started at a school as a janitor or a custodian. And on the second day of his job, he started talking to the marketing department as he overheard one of their conversations about them not being able to run a website. And he showed them his portfolio. On day three, he got a promotion and he started working on the IT team. You never know how putting your hands up for different things in the job that you are now is gonna help you in the future. According to ISC, 63% of cybersecurity pros got their entry into cybersecurity through adjacent jobs, not direct security roles. If that doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what to tell you. It's okay to start somewhere else and work your way up. You never know what life is gonna throw at you. All right, so let's run it back. You don't need a degree. You don't need 10 years of experience. You just need a system. Number one, learn your foundations, networking, Linux, security. Number two, start actually building projects. Check out the ones on our website to learn the fundamentals and then keep moving up through intermediate and more advanced concepts. Number three, learn how to position yourself, build on top of those projects and document every single thing that you do. And number four, start looking for roles that are even adjacent to Cloud Security Engineer because you never know how you'll get your break. If you follow that, already you're 90% ahead of most people who are just Googling cloud certifications or AWS certifications. Those things are not going to help compared to actually building and getting the experience. In terms of how long this all takes, it's really up to you. It really depends how much time you put into this, how often you're documenting your projects, how often you're actually posting what you do. These things are important and they're going to add up in the long run. So this could take you anywhere from six months to 10 years. It really depends at what pace you're willing to move and also what experiences you can already leverage in your current networks. Everyone's journey is gonna look different and that is okay. Anyway, that wraps up today's video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, follow, comment. I really love it when you guys comment. I reply to all of them and it makes me happy to see what you're working on, what you're celebrating, or what you think about the future. I will always reply. Well, unless this gets a million comments. Peace out.